brother. I used to think this would take you to heaven. That was what saved you. That was the only name given whereby we must be saved is Jesus. There's no other door to get in the house. You can't go through a crack in the floor. Man, we had a mess at the house the other day. If you don't keep an eye on your house and what's going on, you can get in a mess. Naturally and spiritually. Hello. There was a leak out from under this thing, out from under the them things that ain't no count, that no, never work. I've never seen one that actually worked. What are that? The dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen one really function right. They're just there. And they're a trap for insects. I have to pull them out and spray under them every day. I deal with my. I don't like dishwashers. And it makes people lazy. Like me. So the guy with the shirt tail out. But my point is this. That had leaked under that thing. And I got up under the floor and started looking. And there was one spot it had almost rotted a hole out that we're going to have to fix. But you can't see it. It's up under that dishwasher. A lot of this stuff you can't see it. So we never have got rid of it. Stuff you can see. Stuff I used to tell us you had to do and couldn't do. You could see it. It was easy to deal with. But a lot of this stuff we're up against now, you can't see it. We deal with the effects of it, of these spirits and things that we wrestle with, the powers of the air. He's the prince of the powers of the air. There's stuff in the air. There's stuff in the atmosphere. That's why we say when praise and worship unto the one true and living God goes up from a pure heart, from a heart, not a perfect and not a, a spotless person, but a pure heart, a heart that's toward God, an honest heart. When that's lifted up, it changes the atmosphere in a room. Imagine the atmosphere when the whole supply of God, the promise of God was poured out on 120 people. Amen. The original church. Amen. The atmosphere probably was like when you, when you touch somebody and it shocks them. You got out of the, up off the couch or something and it shocks them. Imagine that, just electricity, just that life, that force. Yeah. There's more than this. This is a beautiful building. The temple is a beautiful temple. The Jews made their boast in the temple. Oh, I, I was circumcised at the temple. We were married in the temple. We go and give our alms and do our things in the temple. Their boast was in that structure, in that building, in that religion, in that facade of, of religion. Here comes Jesus and his apostles preaching. It says, you are the temple. You are God's building. It says that, those words. He said, ye are God's building. Well, how many buildings has he got? This is a beautiful structure. But there'll come a day this won't exist anymore. There'll come a day the money in your pocket, in our bank, in the little old the measly bank accounts that we've got. There'll come a day that you burn it to stay warm. It won't be good for nothing no more. There's a time will come the confidence we've got in our country, in our government, in our world, in our leaders. It's all going to fail. The only thing that's going to stand is that word of God. And then that end will begin to amen. And then 66 books and anything that the devil's took out of it through the decades of time. Amen. It'll stand when the world's on fire. And after it burns up, amen, the Bible said that elements would melt one day with a fervent heat. What are the elements? Oxygen, nitrogen, the, the gases and, and things in our, our atmosphere. They're going, to, they're going to not exist anymore. Amen. And if that was all there was to it, like I said a minute ago, it would be pretty tragic. But this is how God works. I've never seen it any other way. He always gives an alternative. Okay, I want to do this because you've done this, but here's the way out. I'm not going to make it unbearable. I don't want to destroy you. I want to save you. Religion will kill us. In the name of Jesus. Most of the atrocities that's been committed on the earth have been in the name of some kind of religion. Jesus is not a warlord. He's the prince of peace. 
He didn't have a place to lay his head. He didn't have a home, and he created the worlds. Amen. Slung the stars out of nothing. The, the earth is actually hung. Somebody said it's flat. I don't believe it is. It, it don't matter to me if it's shaped like a cone or a, a triangle. I could care less. Regardless of what it is, God set it out there. Jesus slung it out there on nothing. It's hung on nothing. I got to thinking the other day, Sister Jan, about my heart. Do you ever just become aware of yourself? And I'm not talking New Age or Buddhist. Stuff. Like, I believe in Jesus and holiness the whole time. Way, boy. I don't believe in none of that stuff. But do you ever just become aware of yourself? Be sitting in your car. Be sitting at your job praying, meditating uh, on God's word. And just all of a sudden become aware and say, I'm a living creature. We get numb. This, this culture we live in makes us numb to the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ, of the spirit of God. We've got to be uh, uh, titillated. We've got our sin got to be uh, provoked at all times. And these devices and things our kids are on are so much worse. It's destroying our young people. It's totally destroying our young people. It's desensitizing them. They don't care. They don't want to hear nothing. They don't want to feel nothing. All they want to do is, is be obsessed with that image of that. The Bible said very, very uh, cautious words about images. Because what we set before our eyes and, and set as an idol before our eyes, if you're not careful, we'll begin to idolize it and it'll become a God to us. Yeah, we've become our culture uh, of, of money and wealth and all these things. We've become our own God. Yeah, Jesus says, return unto me. Come out of her, my people. And be not a partaker of her sin. What is he talking about? He's talking about this world system. Before there's ever a mark of the beast or a beast, we think of a big monster. It's a government system. It's a state of mind. Amen. That, that puts God completely out of the arrangements. We don't need him out of the arrangements, brother. We need him back in the arrangements. We don't need, you know, they took prayer out of schools. Well, some of us took our kids out of schools. Huh? They used to whip kids when I was in school. I remember Max Williams, this guy, Davy Crockett, this big man, taking a paddle, wearing me out, lifting me up off the ground. He said, touch your toes. I said, I can't. I never could. I can't. I'm shaped weird. I'm long in the torso. And I try to bend over and I can't reach up. He said, you'll touch them toes and push my back and push me up. And they put people in jail now for how the teachers used to do it. But it didn't kill nobody. Nope. It didn't hurt nobody. And I'm here to tell you, I didn't get enough of them. I wish they had beat me. I'm telling you, I'm not talking about abusing children. We know that. But the scriptures tell us how to conduct ourselves and raise our children. But today the world is raising them and the device is raising them. And we've got teenagers and 11 and 12 year old girls and kids playing on YouTube and playing games with people. And a lot of them act like they're children. And it's some man somewhere, some adult, some sick man, some uh, weirdo somewhere in a basement somewhere acting like a child. And then kids come up missing and we wonder what's going on. It's because mom and daddy was too busy on a device themselves. Talking to somebody's spouse or doing something they shouldn't have been doing. Amen. And while they was slumbering and sleeping, the devil cut in unawares and messed everything up and tore up our lives. But God said, come out of that. I'm calling to my people. I'm calling to my bride. Come out of it. We don't have to be like the world. We don't have to be like this system, this church world. You know, you don't, you don't have to think like this world. Also, let this same mind be in you. That was in Jesus Christ, was in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. We're not equal with God tonight. But the same spirit that lived in God when he walked on this earth lives in you tonight if you've got the Holy Ghost. Because there's not the one. The 120 on the day of Pentecost didn't receive 120 separate Holy Ghost. But those cloven tongues like it's a fire. That divided, see. It separated the wheat from the chaff. It separated the sin from that that was of God. I wondered one time, what's speaking in tongues about? What for? 
He said, when they receive the Holy Ghost, they'll shake their left foot. But that's not what they done. They begin to speak with other tongues. And I start thinking, why? He could have chose anything. For one thing, he wanted the gospel to start in Jerusalem because it had already been prophesied. That's where it would start. And there was people out of every nation under heaven there for that festival. And he wanted them to hear the wonderful works of God. Amen. And that's what the Holy Ghost was telling them about. Amen. And he still operates that way today. But the Bible said from the abundance of the heart. And I'm closing. The mouth speaketh. I believe God chose tongues as a sign and a witness of the Spirit to show us. That he will change us from the inside out. It's not just a miracle of talking in a tongue or a language or, or whatever it might be. That's amazing. But that's just one of the side benefits. It's an evidence that a man's soul has been touched by God. And that that sin nature has been covered by the blood. And that even though the Ability to sin still lives in us. The penalty for sin has been canceled. And that's an amazing thing. And when we re realize that and rest in that. What did Hebrews 4 say? There remaineth. The remaineth. I mean, it's still here. A rest for you. For the people of God. Amen. In the old covenant. It was that day. In this covenant. It's that man. Yeah, right. He said come unto me. All ye. That are heavy laden. I don't know if you realize it or not. And it doesn't seem like anything to the world. But that brother. That came. And was baptized the other day. The one that sat in the back. Brother Michael Triplett. That man was in such a condition. He has messaged me since that service. And told me how God is beginning to turn his life around. And he was a minister. And, and, a, and a powerful musician and singer. And I think, Brother Tim, there's so many men and women out there tonight. Running from God. Backslid on God. The worst cases you'll ever see, some of the people, the worst conditions of lives you'll ever see are people that are backsliders. that are trying to run. I've been there. You'll try to run from it. You won't want to have it. I mean, you'll, it, it just, but you can't get away from it. This real thing, this spirit of God, this real Holy Ghost ruins you. You're hurt. Not ruined, you're hurt. You know what rurt? You're rurt. What do you mean rurt? I mean nothing else will ever satisfy you. I go to churches, man, they have beautiful buildings. They have singing. It's so good, man. It, it, you know, I feel like, Lord, what am I even doing trying to sing a song? It's so good. Everything's, it sounds like Hollywood, man. But you can't feel nothing. But the smoke and the, the theatrics. Of it. Jesus didn't come in no theatrics. The apostles were ignorant and unlearned men. They didn't come through with no degrees and, and, and big things on. They just come through with the power of God. Yeah. Like Peter and John was reading about the other night. They said, we ain't got no money to give you. We don't have no silver and gold. We don't have none of it. But what we've got, we're going to give it to you. They had a supply of Christ, of the Spirit. Whatever you need tonight, there's a supply of it. If you need healing in your body, there's an there's a unlimited supply of healing virtue. Jesus, when that woman touched him that time, he told her, he said, I perceive he could feel. It was a tangible thing that left his body, an actual thing. And he said, I perceive that virtues went out of my body. Somebody touched me. And he knew who touched her, him. But he wanted her to recognize. He wanted her to have a testimony. That I pressed my way. There was a crowd there. There was circumstances. It didn't look like I was ever going to get to get to it. It didn't look like I was going to be able to actually touch this man. But I got just close enough where I could touch the hem of that garment. Amen. And that supply of God, that river of life. Amen. It flows like we read the other night. Everything connects when you see the oneness of God. He's in everything that's a 
God is Jesus. He's just, he's all in it. Amen. And he said that river that proceeds out from under the throne of God, out from under the altar, out from under the place of prayer. That's the Holy Ghost. Because he told us, Brother Carl, out of your belly, out of your innermost being of who you are, not just out of your tongue. Because he used to have things in the and I'm not criticizing. I promise you, if I ever say something that sounds stupid, it probably is stupid. But I'm not criticizing and condemning folks. We used to do that a little bit. And God's not pleased with that. If somebody doesn't understand, pray for them. You wasn't born all at once. We wasn't born riding a bicycle or driving a car. You know what? We were born helpless. Laying on our back. You remember what a big, big uh, ordeal it was when the baby rolled over it the first time. We couldn't even roll over. Just lay there, helpless. That's the way we are. It really is. Man, we can have it in here. But when trouble comes, one day trouble might come and there's nobody to call on. The man on the wall, he's not with us no more. There's one day you might look around and your spouse may not be there anymore. Amen. People's grandparents that they've always depended on to get a hold of God, they won't be there one day. Right. My wife, we talk a lot, you know, people want to ride hips. You can't ride hips and make it in. We've got to walk it for ourselves. Amen. You've got to work out your own salvation with fear and what? Trembling. Sometimes this thing makes you tremble. You think this God knows all about me. He searches the reins of the heart. Amen. You know there's reins. There, you used to talk about heart strains. I, I saw a thing, a scientific thing. There's actually things. People's heart can break. They can die from them. There's like strains of tissue, of muscle in your heart. He goes inside of that and transforms us. From the inside out. Religion will try to transform you from the outside in and it never works. You talk about a devil. Get you one hold of that. But God can do such a work on the inside of us. And you say, well, I was saved when I was 14 years old. Well, get saved again. Somebody said, well, I was born again when I was 12 years old. Well, get born again again. Or they say you couldn't do it and it happened again. But I can read you about regeneration, yeah. about restoration, yeah. about being renewed in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And if there was ever a time we need to be renewed in the Holy Ghost, it's now. Yeah. We don't need to be renewed in anything else but the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God that causes us to go back into the mountains and pray again. That causes us to cut off the world, shut the door, go into our closets, disappear for a, a while. Everybody's come out of the closet, man. We need to get back in the closet. Everybody, they're talking about coming out of the closet, man. You better get back in it and lock the door. They said, oh, Robert's had a wife. His wife locked the door and locked him in the closet for so many days, and he come out with some power. Hey, man, we're going to have to get back. There's so much stuff out here in this world. If we don't get back in the closet, we're going to wish to God we'd never come out of the closet. Because this world will chew you up and spit you out without the, the anointing of Jesus Christ in your life to protect you and keep you and guide you. You're no match for the spirits of this world in this hour. This is not, I told her, I mean, I bragged on Johnson City and Washington County and this region so much. Uh, and you'd think it was the New Jerusalem. I talk about it so much. Is that not the truth? And I'm a representative of Northeast Tennessee. I love it up here. It's where I'm from. I hold it up to the highs. But I come back after being gone for 14, 15, I guess more than that, 20 years living in other, other places, Texas and Alabama and everywhere and traveling, evangelizing. And I come back and I told her, I said, something has changed. I'm closing. It's, it's true. almost 9 o'clock. But something had changed in that region. I've talked about it in other places. I said, there's one thing about where I'm from. I said, the people's got the sweetest spirit you'll ever find anywhere on earth. 
I said, they'll do anything for you. They'll bring you into their home. My grandma would refuse to let you leave her house if you didn't eat something. <laughs> Honey, you ain't you hungry? And she'd fix you a little pa a plate or a bag or something to take with you if you wouldn't eat. <laughs> Try to give you stuff. Man, you go places, they'll run over you and leave you on the side of the road to die and won't even stop and check on you. But the compassion of the people is what stood out to me and the humility of the people. But drugs and, and, and pills and methamphetamine has had such a, a stronghold on the area since probably the early 90s, probably around the early 90s when cocaine went out and this meth spirit came in and it's almost destroyed anything that's under 50 or 60 years old down and it don't hardly have a life anymore. You see people walking the streets of Johnson City, their eyes, they look like there ain't nothing in there. Because these spirits, because our preachers, because me, I'm popping it on myself, because we was out trying to make a name. Instead of laying, I seen something the other day. Hallelujah. When I was in this service, when I was driving my work van, and something spoke out of me and said, I don't feel the Holy Ghost talking about it. He said, you've seen a man lay between the porch and the altar today. And I thought something insignificant. There was a brother in the service that day. He, got, he laid prostrate in the floor. And I thought, well, I've had the Lord impression me to do that. I didn't think much about it. But I, days later, I was driving. He said, you saw a man lay between the porch and the altar today. What's the significance? What am I talking about? Because in the last days, that's what he told us to do. Not to start more programs, not to get more theatrics, not to get more uh, bling and shine and glimmer, but to get back to the sackcloth, to get back to the thank you, to get back to the to the ashes, amen. To get back to that that no man in his right mind would walk, amen. But that that will crucify this flesh, amen, and put us on the straight way again, put us on that highway that Paul and James and John and Peter walked on, amen. That they had authority over all the enemy. I need authority over it. You can scream at the devil. Volume. All the customs of preaching that we do is learned tradition. Jesus spoke as a man with authority. I don't know if he had a hack or not. I don't know about that. But sometimes we get hacked. Because we get excited. Our flesh is, is affected by the spirit we feel. But Jesus just spoke that word. He could have whispered it. And it still would have went out. And accomplished what it was sent to do. Because it's not in the volume. It's not in 5,000 people. People think they've got to have such a crowd. God can transform this whole region with the number of people that are here tonight. Amen. If our lives really get on fire. And it's not saying that we don't have the spirit, that we don't have it. But man, I need, I'm telling you, I need a rekindling. I need a refreshing. I'll tell you, I do. Amen. Because we get so caught up in life. And we forget about the supply that's been offered to us. That we've got access to at any time. The unlimited supply of Christ. Of the Christ. The spirit of God. Jesus was the Christ. It wasn't his last name. It's who he was. Some people think Christ is Jesus' last name. It wasn't even part of his name. It's a title. His name is Jesus. Yeah. You know, an angel even revealed that name. Amen. Joseph didn't know what to call him. What are you going to call him? You know what he called him? The only thing you could call him. Jesus is a form of Joshua, and it means the Lord is our salvation. Yeah. What else would you call him? He's our salvation. Yeah. His name is wonderful to and I encourage I hope this is encouraging faith and building up a little bit. But tonight, I'm sorry for holding you so long, but I encourage you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be down and out. Don't feel like you've run out of what you run on. Don't feel like your your hand is over here on the E and you can't get to a gas station. But you can't get filled up again. You can get filled up again. Don't think because you got it when grandma and grandpa was here. 
and it was so real and it was so right and so pure and so real to you and this stuff now and you just to get hold of that let the Lord refresh you it'll be the same spirit because it's just one the same thing it moved when grandma was here shouting will be the same thing it'll move on you when you're here shouting because there's not enough amen but we got to get into that I've got to get into that that's the only thing that's going to keep us in this hour is the word Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet tonight. Don't lose sight of the supply of Christ, of Jesus, of, of all that God is that's available to us. And it's good to have people pray and lay on hands. But you got to get to the place where you can pray for yourself. People used to prophesy and they'd give you a word on the phone and it'd be real. It wouldn't be a bunch of junk. A lot of this stuff's just a pink of pain some. This ain't a pink of pain some. There's a story behind that. But it ain't a think I seen some. There's a no so. There's a behold saith the Lord. Amen. And that'll keep us. Every word that he's ever spoke to you tonight. The person that spoke those words may have passed away years ago, but that word didn't pass away. It won't return void. It won't fall to the ground. It'll be accomplished somewhere in your life. And tonight, I encourage us to look to the Lord. I'm excited. It's been a hard couple of years. Especially, I feel bad saying that to y'all. You Lost Brother George, lost Brother Tom, lost so many other people and families. It's been hard. Surely God's getting us ready for something. Surely, Brother David, God's just not going to let us just dwindle down it's so bad. I believe he's going to send us some strength here in these last days. If I had preached what I originally thought about, it was talking about a day that would not be light nor dark. But that even at the darkest part of it, that there would be an evening light. That when all the lights was out, there was no light nowhere, there still would be a lamp on somewhere. There still would be a little light. There still would be something that if you would really get your mind right and your eye single, you'd see well enough to be able to walk that path and live for God. Because the age we're in right now, it's going to get so overwhelmingly confusing and troubling for people's minds. That it would take God to just keep our soundness of our mind. That computers and devices and robotic type things that don't have a soul, amen, control our lives. I just say, come Lord Jesus. Yeah. Fix it. Because we can't fix it. Yeah. But he's given us something here tonight. Mm -hmm. If you have the spirit of God living inside of you, just raise your hands and praise him for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Don't let him slip out. Don't let him leak out. If you find a hole in your bucket, patch it up. We got some flex seal putty stuff. Man, that pipe that was running out on the floor was making such a mess. I put that stuff, but I had them gone in on there. It looked like just awful looking. But when it set and it finally set, it sealed that. Amen. It sealed that. He can seal the holes in our life. Anything that's caused us to loot our desire. Man, I've lost my desire before Brother David didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to go out and get drunk or do drugs or party or do any of that. Or, or do things that the people do. But I just didn't want to do nothing. Right. Didn't want to get out of bed. Didn't want to eat. Didn't want to even live. Didn't want to exist. Have you ever been there tonight? Right. Amen. Some people haven't, but I've been there tonight. Yeah. But I want to tell you something. When you get to that point, there's a point you reach and you have to make a decision. I'm either going to go on in the depth of this darkness and let it just consume my life. Or I'm going to try to turn my life back to God. Amen. And when you're presented with that decision, you have to choose Jesus. 
Because we're in an hour right now. If you backslide, you may not get back. You might not make it to the church again. You might not make it back to the altar. You might not never hear another gospel song. You may never be able to come and ask anybody to pray for you again. So let's keep on fire, man. It's good. We've been having good services. It's not, I am no nothing. It's just I'm here to help the people out, trying to help and help Brother Crawl and David and the brothers and sisters here in any way I can and try to be a servant. Amen. But God is wanting to bless people here. I believe that. Amen. I really believe that. Amen. And uh, this place has been a powerhouse in this area. But you know what? All that aside, all that aside, not the shouting, the power, all the, the fire of it. If you can just feel your heart broken, if you can just feel humbleness in your heart, that's a process tonight. If you've ever been around a man that has a hard heart, have you ever had a hard heart? I know I've got family that have their hearts so hard, but if you can feel something that'll make you cry, Hold to that. That's the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Don't ever let the, the, the world harden you to where you can't cry, where you can't touch the, yeah. the humility of God. Amen. Jesus was touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He cried for us. Amen. When he prayed in the garden and, and when he all these things he went through, he did that for us. He didn't sin. He didn't have to do things to, to fix his sin because he didn't do sin. He never committed a sin. He prayed for us. He got baptized for our example. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He suffered for our example. And tonight, let's love him with all of our heart. Let's reach out to our loved ones like never before. Me and Sister Aaron were talking after I got home from work for a few minutes. That's all that matters. This stuff, this other stuff don't even matter. It's just reaching lost men and women, reaching a soul, reaching somebody that religion's given up on, or somebody that church has told you can't come back. Let's worry about them and get tactical about how to reach them. Yeah. Either when the souls is what? Wise. Amen. We're wise. I'm wise, but Carl, a lot of stuff, but I need to get wise about how to win a soul. Yes. Not just debate a scripture or prove a point, yes. but actually win that soul to the kingdom of God. Yes. I want to learn that, don't you? Yes. I want to learn that. Let's go to David Place tonight. And they play. If you got a need and you want us to agree with you in prayer, we will. You can come up here. And we'll agree with you. Sammy knows he's able. His supply is unlimited. Resources are in heaven. There's no limit, no boundary. It's all free. There's no price for any of it. All you've got to do is ask. He said he'd give you the kingdom. If we'd ask you. Oh, my God. 
Let's thank you for this service. Brother Adam, pray us out, Lord. 